Hello and welcome to Surveyor Says, the podcast from the National Society of Professional Surveyors. Each week, we bring you fascinating guests that are involved in the profession of surveying. We cover a lot of ground, including Table Lay Talk with Gary Kent, Point of Order with the NSPS Joint Government Affairs Team, Future Focus, highlighting current and future leaders of the profession, and everything survey-related in between. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast, and hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Surveyor Said. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Surveyor Says. This is your host, Tim Birch, and hopefully you've been paying attention. We've been putting out a few, an email blast, some news and views, and some other uh, some other propaganda out there that uh, really wants to make sure that we have more opportunities, more educational opportunities for our practitioners, or even people that are looking to get in, for engineers that are looking to get into more surveying. So today, as, as my guest, we have Joe Piva of Kansas City, Missouri, uh, and a little company he's created a, year, a few years ago called GeoLearn. Uh, welcome, Joe. I appreciate you taking time to, to talk to us about all the educational offerings that GeoLearn is, is really putting together over this past year and some of the exciting things going forward in which uh, we're going to help you part, and we're going to partner in uh, the promotion of all these things. Thank you, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here, and I am happy to talk about GeoLearn and why we can be of assistance to not only individual surveyors, but the profession in general. Well, that's great. And, you know, that was one of the things that excited me when when we started talking about uh, being able to kind of collaborate on promoting all of these things is the amount of of speakers and the amount of subjects uh, and the broad ranges of topics that uh, you, you've put uh, a lot of time and a lot of hours in trying to trying to put all of this this relevant and up to date content. Um, talk a, talk through it a little bit. The whole process of really what what kind of, what's what made you create GeoLearn and really want to push this thing forward. I mean, you obviously you've had a background in education for many years. What made you want to go to this next step with multimedia offerings? Yes, so it's a it's a really interesting process. When I stop and look back, someday I need to write about this. <laughs> um, but um, I accidentally fell into surveying, and I accidentally fell into teaching. Both happened because I was accidentally asked to teach. And when I say accidentally, it's because faculty at the school, I happen to be a grad student at developed a heart attack. Uh, Nobody wanted to teach the surveying because it's too hard or whatever. And so I was an older graduate student. The faculty knew that I had done a lot of surveying when I worked uh, in the field after my bachelor's before I came back in to do my master's. And so uh, I taught for a while and then accidentally uh, started getting asked by my uh, the Missouri Society of Professional Surveyors, it had a different name back then, to organize continuing education. And so I got my feet wet doing that, and I've been on the seminar circuit since the 70s. And what has happened more recently in the uh, when we came into the new century is that uh, I started to realize that there were many opportunities to deliver education in other than the traditional way. Uh, What also happened was, uh, you know, I travel a lot because I have a career that included working uh, in international positions for Sukiya and Trimble, and I would often have seatmates who would talk about their difficulty with continuing education, and these were not surveyors. These could be teachers, psychologists, um, you name it, and they all hated continuing education because almost all their professions had gone to online methodology and they hated it because it consisted of sitting up late on New Year's Eve and downloading a bunch of courses, reading them as quickly as possible, and then jumping <laughs> to the quiz. <laughs> yep. So I could tell that even though it was called continuing education, it was more like 
checking a box for some licensing board. Now, I didn't, at that time, I didn't know what was going on in surveying. So I started looking around and I realized that we had something very similar in our profession as well. And because of my teaching background, I resolved to do something different. And it just so happens I have a background in theater and had been asked to, on an experimental basis by a by an institution I won't name here, that asked me to develop some online courses that people didn't know what they were doing. And right. so I thought I would kind of pull everything I knew, pull people who are in the field of, I'm going to call it AV, basically, it's video production. And what we've done is created a small studio here in Ken the Kansas City area. It's a multiple camera studio with an electronic smart board. So basically, we decided we needed to offer a multimedia type of um, program for the for the customers rather than something really dry. And because I've been on the seminar circuit for decades, I knew a lot of the people on the seminar circuit. In fact, my very first two people, I named them my guinea pigs. They were uh, Gary Kent and Wendy Lathrop. And they uh, very patiently uh, put up with all our experimentation, all our learning process to help standardize the process for creating uh, video courses that could be delivered efficiently. Now, when I say video courses, these are it's basically a parallel to what someone might experience when they go to a conference or a seminar, except instead of sitting in a in a group with uh, fifty or hundred or two hundred or five hundred fellow attendees, uh, you sit with your computer. One of the advantages is, especially if you're a fidgety person, you can stop and start the course as you wish. You can even come back to it the next day. The other thing we did is uh, the research actually shows even an hour is too long. We, we aim for 50-minute blocks because it's a nice, convenient unit of professional development unit that everybody looks for. But you can start and stop as much as you want and to satisfy the licensing boards, you go through at normal speed the first time, but then you can come back and go at high speed to go backwards and forwards. And then what we do is we we download a PDF of the PowerPoint, and because it's a smart board, people might do calculations on the smart board. They might mark up the smart board with additional points. Uh, they don't read the PowerPoint to you, or at least they shouldn't. Some of us do it more than others, but it also depends on the topic and which page we're at. And so you have this as a guide if you need it. So you can either mark it up electronically yourself, but you get the electronic markup of what we create during the video session. So we already have some notes that have been pre-prepared for you that are typewritten, PowerPoint slides, basically, although there might be other documents. And then the electronic ink that we added with more comments, and you, you can add your own. And then what we did was to make sure that they would be accepted, we found universities that were willing to essentially approve our continuing education. So we have Texas State, uh, excuse me, Texas A&M, in Corpus Christi, our, our first provider, and currently East Tennessee State University faculty who review our content so that when we issue our, our certificate to you, you have this, uh, this approval from this university. Very good. Well, and I, you know, that's part of what I wanted to talk about was, was the whole format. And I would, I'd like to think that as bad as COVID was, and but it it forced us to it forced us into a little bit of solitude. It forced us into interacting with screens and getting a lot more of our uh, a, a lot of more of our work done over a screen. And you know we're seeing more and more of of the of the college curriculums, especially even in surveying, that are going to online platforms. Um, talk talk a little bit about uh, if you can about you know, in putting that content together and really being able to 
to specialize it a little bit more uh, in into a recording versus then hopefully somebody trying to talk through something in a live seminar. Yeah, so one of the benefits of seeing a course online is that let's say I'm talking about uh, errors analysis or how instrumentation impacts or the quality of your instrumentation or the state of adjustment of your instrumentation affects your measurements. Well, if I have a total station, even if I find the biggest total station in the market, if you are in an audience of 100 or 200, uh, you can't all come up and look at what I'm looking at. But what we do there, especially in a multi-camera studio, is we'll use our third camera to bring in close-ups as I point to things with my finger or my pen or whatever, so you can actually see what I'm talking about. When we have uh, the other thing that you might experience if you're in an in-person uh, seminar is somebody will be talking about, let's say, the ALTA specs, but it could be whatever specs you have in your home state. And they put them up on the screen. Well, except for the first two rows, nobody can read read what's up there. <laughs> yep. So, so what we do is we blow it up on the screen. We, you know, you know, having been teaching now for decades, I know that if I want to reach my entire audience, I got to make it accessible to all of them, not just the first couple of rows. Um, there's other issues. You know, I have been to many venues where people don't take enough trouble to make sure that whatever is on the screen is actually visible. You know, there might be a very bright light just above the screen. And if I arrive the night before, the first thing I do is go to go find the hotel people and say, you need to take that bulb out. Once I discover that the lights can't be turned off entirely, because I don't believe in presenting in a darkened room because then everybody falls asleep right <laughs> right so so it's those kinds of things paying attention to to the background of my experience in teaching both continuing education and college classes and my experience with the whole video production process i'm not the expert in fact there, there are guys in my office who will not let me make certain decisions or touch some of the equipment, which is totally fine because we need to each respect our own uh, areas of expertise. But when they say, no, you need to say use these words, I'll say no, because that's not what the surveyors need to hear. It, it, it will cause a misunderstanding. So, so it's a multidisciplinary team that puts these things together with a lot more care than the average presentation that you might see because it's not just the presenter, it's everything else that goes into the whole experience that you have. Well, and I guess that's the thing I I personally like about this type of a format. And it's not to necessarily knock uh, an in-person conference, in-person seminars. Uh, but you know, unfortunately, there's, there is going to be a, a significant amount of people sitting amongst you that that don't want to have that same educational uh, experience that, that you want. And you're trying to sit there and absorb all these things. And when you get the talking around you and the other stuff in your periphery, uh, th there's no hitting a rewind button on, on a, a live presenter and rewinding them back. Say, can you say that again? Because so-and-so over here was beside chit chatting or his phone rang or what have you. You've got that in front of you, you know, in your, in your own atmosphere in your own environment if you if you if you're right taking notes you you can back up and listen to it again i guess that's to me is is the is the nice thing about it uh, one of the things i do want to talk about is the the broad range of topics that uh, you've been able to secure with with the various speakers because uh, you know just looking through your catalog i mean it goes from the very basics which is great for for uh for the, some of the young technicians coming into the, into the market, uh, in, into our, our career, but then you, you, you do good get into some pretty serious stuff, uh, down the line. Tell us a, a little bit about that range of, of topics that, that, uh, you do have in your catalog. Uh, as I said, we started with Gary Kent, who's talked about his ALTA uh, topics, you know, he's he's probably one of the most knowledgeable persons in that area. 
and Wendy Lathrop, who started with uh, flood floods, basically. Right. And then we moved out. So Gary does things now on the uh, apparent uh, quasi-judicial role of the surveyor, as an example. And uh, Wendy has done things on ethics and good quality writing. And so what I've done is what's unusual and what's not necessarily the same thing that somebody would experience in a conference or a seminar. Because I come, some of you know this already, I come from what I call an altruistic background, meaning I want people to learn. This is not a check the box experience. And if you want to check the box, there's lots of cheap ways to do that and satisfy the licensing board if your ethical a moral compass is such that it allows you to do that. You know, I couldn't do that myself. And so I want to attract people who really want to understand something. And I'm more than happy to take questions from them by email, even if I'm not the presenter. Because if you go to the catalog, you'll see that I started out by hiring people that I met on the seminar circuit. These were all friends because we would meet at lunches and breaks and things like that. In fact, I've attended most of their seminars. But over time, I've started to, to add more people. And as you just indicated, uh, now technicians are welcome as well, because starting in this year, we started a kind of a new division or new catalog, which is the training programs videos. And these are much shorter, much less expensive. Um, and then a, a bunch of free content that we'll keep adding to as well. So. So what we want to do is provide a different experience because I hear this from state society executives and others, leaders, that GeoLearn is, is competing with them, especially in our collaboration with NSPS, and that's not it at all. There are always the people for whom a scheduled conference is at an inconvenient time, whether that's work issues or there's a birthday or a wedding anniversary or somebody's funeral or and so on and so forth. But then there are other, other reasons, because if you are truly interested in learning or having your team learn, it may be that the topics being presented at your local conference don't get it. I mean, you'd still go because most of most surveyors who are members of societies tend to be supportive of those societies. But if they really need to learn something, then they might buy a package of courses from us. And we offer group plans where we uh, discount them and so forth. If people approach us, you know, we want to train all our people on these ALTA topics, for example. So, so that's how we kind of approach uh, our lives as providing quality education that, by the way, helps you meet the fulfillment, uh, uh, fulf uh, the fulfilling requirements of land surveying boards. Well, exactly. And you hit on something there that, you know, I've been talking about in my presentations for the last couple of years. Um, unfortunately, throughout, I mean, throughout the entire, all of the associations, uh, both state and national throughout the country, only about 40% of the licensed surveyors in the country are actually members of an association. So we, you know, we have this large, you know, we've got a majority that are not part of an organization, do not necessarily have to go to the, to the state associations and, and gather, uh, gather their continuing education by providing this type of, of, of support through partnerships and what have you, you know, I, you know, if nothing else, we're also we're trying to promote what the value of membership is and being able to, to get them get them to come to conferences and such. But then also offering these types of educational opportunities through GeoLearn. Um, bottom line is, you know, if we're going to be treated like uh, like every other profession, we are a practicing profession. I always crack up when when people laugh about, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I go to my practicing doctor. Well, wouldn't you want to go to a doctor that's still practicing to get better? Well, why wouldn't you want a, your surveyor to be practicing to get better and continually uh, continuing to learn? Uh, something, and, and this kind of goes back to your longevity in the in the industry. You two, you as well, have seen the the, the reduction 
end mentoring. We've went from the three-man crew to the two-man crew, and now there's a lot of one-man crew operations out there. And where we're not seeing that that generational uh, passing down the torch of 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 uh, information of knowledge uh, down through the ranks, my guess. So that's part of my question is, you know, why wouldn't somebody want to to have an opportunity to to take these classes? Um, because obviously we're not we're not transferring that knowledge base. Uh, through our technicians from the professionals down through the technicians like we used to with everyday field crew uh, interaction. Yes, I agree. Uh, I think you know I haven't announced this uh, nationally, certainly in our state of Missouri I have. Uh, we've created a new school called uh, Midwest Geospatial Academy. We use it to offer all the surveying courses. And Missouri is a unique uh, license licensing situation you don't need to have a college degree but you do need to have 15 hours of uh, surveying credits at the college level six of which are in legal aspects so we provide that because the college that uh, was offering them and which by the way where i used to teach uh, has decided that surveying is really not that important to what they do in terms of meeting the needs of surveyors and uh, we thought this would work out work out better this way, uh, but providing that kind of information uh, to an entire team is so important because in Missouri, anyway, uh, we see probably that eighty or ninety percent of our students in these college classes are being funded by the employers. Uh, and we have a very nice program because we have two required uh, two courses with required labs. And while some students will come to campus, Missouri being a relatively large state, not everybody can make it to a central location conveniently. So they have the option to sign up their land surveyor. We get the land surveyor to sign the agreement with the student that they will perform the field exercises, get the help of the land surveyor to basically be the role of the lab instructor. Uh, and so there's some teaching going on that way now, understandably, because the classes are mostly focused on getting people to pass the fundamentals of surveying exam. They're not going to be using robots because you don't get to use a robot during the exam. You better know how to calculate these things by hand. Right. The calculator that you bought when you join the industry, but then put on the shelf because everything's too easy for you. But but that's one of the things that we really want to do more uh, once our school gets underway and, and GeoLearn will support this activity, which is how do we conduct uh, field institutes, uh, workshops, whatever you want to call it, learning sessions where people learn things like how to use that total station to set anchor bolts, for example, when it's a difficult situation, uh, those kinds of things. And we can kind of do a little bit of prep for that kind of uh, instruction by talking about it in a GeoLearn course. We can even demonstrate it. But in the end, there's in-person learning. I, I wanted to say, that for me, the ideal learning environment is in person, but in a small group of maybe 10 people. Right. Uh, once it gets to be 200, you already described some of those difficulties, whether it's the unfortunate thing that you wind up in the back of the room and the screen is way too small to allow you to see anything, or you got noisy or disturbing neighbors, and, and it just kind of goes downhill from there. Well, that's just it. And um, I think what I think you're on to something that's uh, obviously very, very um, attractive to a, 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 a large range of, of practitioners that are now coming up. You know, that's one thing that we have noticed. Um, and that's well, I guess that's another uh, little uh, little shout out to you and and you, uh, your employees. Joe was also the one that provided all of the, the photo and video support for the NSPS student competition. Uh, held in DC this this past spring, and um, you know that's something that uh, you know you're you're maintaining a position 
within the young surveyors and the and the 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 young students as well they're eager they want to learn and but they want to learn it on in different terms than sitting in classrooms sitting in uh sitting in large uh uh conference like sessions uh they they want to do it on their own on, on really by their by their own whims so um i i appreciate what you're putting together uh with geolearn um if so if somebody wants to learn more about geolearn where do we go where are we sending them to real easy on the nsps site uh, you go to the membership link or excuse me the membership menu item and then in the drop down go to geolearn the advantage of doing that is that you get any current discounts that are available for NSPS members. Uh, so I don't know when this uh, will be broadcast, so I'm not going to mention what the discount is, but it will vary from time to time. And then we'll run specials on top of that. So it's really important to pay attention to what gets published in News and Views, uh, because there's where we will publicize it uh, for the NSPS members. But uh, if you're in a bind and you can't uh, uh, figure out how to get to any of that, our standard URL is www.geo-learn.com. But really, don't use it because you won't uh, get the automatic discounts. And by the way, we do provide some support to NSPS uh, from whatever... Um, fees you might pay to take your courses but keep in mind that there's a lot of free content so i encourage you to go in and check out the free content uh, for a licensed surveyor there's an introduction to the alta specs that we intentionally made free and for those of you technicians well just click on the free course button and and check out what might interest you well and what i've noticed in the catalog there's a there's several good sessions in there also about the uh the upcoming 20 25 changes actually it's called the 2022 nsrs datum but uh all the datum changes that are coming up through ngs you've got a lot of great uh great selections in there as well so uh joe i gotta thank you for taking the time to talk to me today and and really putting together a quite a catalog of of educational opportunities that the you know the entire profession can really take advantage of you know it's one of those things that uh we we want to continue to grow the profession, um, but uh, we need to keep providing ways to be able to provide that education. And uh, you're, you're doing a great job uh, putting, this, putting this content out in front for everybody. Well, thank you very much. Really appreciate the opportunity to chat. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for this week's episode of Surveyor Says. Wherever you're listening, whatever streaming uh, channel you're listening, hit that subscribe button and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. You've been listening to the Surveyor Says Podcast, brought to you by the National Society of Professional Surveyors. If you have any questions about today's episode or any other topic, please email us at info at nsps.us.com, and we are here to help. Visit our website, nsps.us.com, to learn more about our association, the programs we administer and support, our sustaining members, and information about future episodes of Surveyor Says. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, as well as our podcast host, Podbean. And remember, it's a great day to be a surveyor.